I thought maybe no, you don't need a chamber heater in the 2.4. Just put it back to stock, leave everything alone. It'll be fine, just keep the room warmer. Then this morning I woke up to this. The long skirt pieces for a 350 millimeter build spec. Tried it, and at some point in the night, they worked enough to pop off the bed. And people will say, Adhesion, you need more adhesion. Well, the adhesion is a band aid, the problem is a differential in temperature between the bed or just above the bed and a little higher up even if you had good adhesion the top of your part is still shrinking more than the uh, first few layers of it so the uh, chamber heaters back on the to-do list so I picked up uh, a couple sheets of aluminum composite. If you've ever thought about ordering this stuff from Home Depot, here's my experience. That's where this is from. This Falcon design. I ordered black. It's black on one side. The other side is white. That's not a layer. This side's got the peel off layer. Um, the corners were well protected. So that was what I was worried about, but it did take on a slight bend in shipping. They packed it flat and at some point probably in shipping, the flat package got bowed just a little bit, but it's annoying because you want it to be flat. So I laid it on the workbench with a couple pieces of granite on top of it and got it fairly flat. And then once it's cinched down, um, it's 20 bucks for like a 24 by 24 inch piece which is big enough to cover the biggest four on. So, eh, um, aluminum on the outside is 0.3 millimeters thick. So, after only being black on one side, I wasn't going to order it again, but now I'm looking at my IDEX machine thinking I would like a piece of it for the bottom. And that would be a lot cheaper than getting a piece custom cut. I still haven't checked with any local sign shops. That's probably the best way to go. So, we replaced the polycarbonate on top with this aluminum composite sheet, and that should take care of some of that heat. I also wanted to put a uh, something to deflect heat up in this corner, because this front bar here gets really hot. Um, haven't done that, but I'm going to go ahead and run this thing anyway. And... With, for, with my backup power supply, I can only run the chamber heater at 30% with it and the bed heater both. Oh, speaking of the bed heater, one of the reasons I was thinking about not moving forward with the chamber heater was because it turns out my Kenovo bed heater was dying after two years. Um, nothing visible, nothing came loose. I did have some blistering in the center of the bed, so there were hot spots in it. Um, and had issues with it failing the checks in Clipper, uh, would not come up to temperature, temperature as fast as it should. Um, went through everything in the system, everything else checked out, but the resistance of the heater was like 37 ohm. Or was it K? Yeah, it's 37 K. And, uh. It should have been like 19. So replace that and we're back to working fine. Uh, sucks because I wouldn't expect a part like that to need replaced every couple years. So I'm not sure if I got a bad one or that's just how they are. I've got the chamber heater all the way down to 20% so it won't piss off the battery backup. But one side effect of that that I kind of like is it's getting keeping the heating elements on the heater down around 70 degrees which 
that's about as hot as I want anything in the printer getting so I don't have to worry so much about the hot air that's being blown out of the heater and what that's heading so that might work out I'm reprinting the same exact file that failed before uh, kinda hate to risk printing two items but uh, if we want to have a test we gotta have a direct comparison so we'll see how that goes it's being printed in Quality Maker ASA, uh, bed's only 90 degrees, that's all Quality Maker actually calls for. And I found that having too high of a bed temperature just ends up in deformities near the bottom of the print because there's a bigger differential between the temperature at the bed and a little bit up off the bed to where you get a, a shrinking or a pinching a little bit up off the bed and dropping down to 90 degrees actually alleviates that something just dawned on me about these skirts for a 350 build spec Voron these skirts for a 350 build spec Voron were printed on an Anycubic Mega S with a box over top of it and they turned out fine Sixty-eight percent in. Starting to lift. Damn it. You can also see surface finish is getting bad. <clears throat> because the parts being pushed up against the nozzle. I think we finally have a flat part. Um, combination that worked this time. Add the chamber heater set to 55. Added the hold down tabs. And the other thing I think really makes a difference is the draft shield because it will hold heat near to the part. It will hold the bed heat in near to the part and that will keep these long stretches here relaxed because that's what causes ABS to curl up when you have long straight extrusions like that the longer the piece the more it'll shrink so your infill I use gyroid for the infill because it's not straight lines so that helps tabs help draft sheet shield helps and I think we actually got it is completely flat and attached very firmly. Best thing since flexible build plates. So yeah. I wish I had a better summary for the chamber heater build. Um, basically what it's come down to, this front rail here was getting crazy hot, which was and it actually enough to heat the side rail here, which was making me worried about the parts that were attached there with ABS parts. So I ended up only running the heater at 20%, which kept the heater between 70 and 80 degrees which is the temperature I basically wouldn't have to worry about so I did cut a little piece of sheet metal to split that air up so some would come here and some would come over here and basically not so much to distribute it but to keep it from getting this section as hot um, so we're only running that heater at 20 percent and it only gets the chamber up to 50 degrees without the bed on. With the bed on, we're still only getting to like 55. So hopefully it's enough to help me out in the winter time. And it is capable of doing more, but then parts of the printer get too hot. So 
for the future ideas to keep in mind uh, like having the heater that only gets up to 70 or 80 degrees uh, heat needs to be distributed better find some way where we're not we don't have a hot spot you know it's spread out over the four corners of the printer but to do that we're probably gonna have to put it in the ceiling or something so I think we're just gonna use that as it is for now just to keep my temps keep them in the 50s in the winter time hopefully and then we'll take what we've learned move that into the future but this is probably the last on this project for a little while